Hello, white readers, and welcome to lesson 13. We've been reading Miami Jackson Makes the Play for a couple of weeks now, and we've read the first five chapters. Today, we're going to be taking our skills up another notch. You are white readers, which means you're reading at a third grade level. Well, one of the things that white readers should be doing is as you expand your brain to know more and more words, you also need to be able to use that in your writing. So not only does your reading get better, but your writing gets better too. Also, as a white reader, when you're reading in a book and you come to a word that you don't know, we've been using our context clues. Well, there's also something that you need to know called shades of meaning. Now, shades of meaning have to deal with words that are synonyms. Let me say, for example, if I showed you something that was really big, maybe like a big dog, um, you could say that's a big dog, or you could say that's an enormous dog. Which one's bigger? That's right, the enormous dog would be bigger. And that's called shades of meaning. Big and enormous both mean the same thing, but the intensity changes. And that's what we're going to be working on today as we increase our vocabulary for reading, but also our vocabulary for writing. So I'm going to share my screen and take us right to that presentation so that we can jump right in. All right, let me go over here. Here we go. So this is the presentation for today. Before we start into that lesson, though, I do want to review the question from lesson 12. Um, there was a little bit of confusion in this and the answers were varied. So I wanted to make sure I clarified this with you. Um, for lesson 12, I asked you to answer this question. On page 52, Lincoln says to Miami while they're sorting the mail, he asks him about baseball. And Miami says that he likes baseball, it's fun to play. And he says, try not to forget that. My question to you was, why do you think Lincoln said that to Miami? Well, Lincoln wants Miami to remember that playing baseball is fun. Don't let the nonsense of Destiny Tate or the girls wanting to play baseball change his love for the game. And also don't let him, when, when Kenneth is being all grumpy and, and uh, not liking the things that are happening, don't let it bother you. You enjoy baseball, you love baseball. Don't forget that you love it and enjoy it. So hopefully that provided a little bit of clarification for that question, there was a little bit of confusion around it. So we are at Lesson 13. So supplies and materials. You're going to need your student notebook and a pencil because you're going to be copying some shades of meaning charts into your notebook. Sorry. Also, you're going to be using something called something. You're going to be using something called an online thesaurus. Now, you probably have heard of a dictionary. A dictionary is a book that you go to when you're trying to figure out the meaning of a word. Well, a thesaurus is something that helps you find the synonyms of words. And I'm gonna teach you how to use one of those today. All right, well, we have learning goals. In today's lesson, we will explore the shades of meaning. I have a really quick video clip I'm gonna be showing you that's gonna help you understand that. And I'm gonna show you how to use a thesaurus to find shades of meaning. So when I say shades of meaning, what exactly do I mean? Well, I already gave you an example of big and enormous, but there's a whole bunch of words in between. Here's an example. A synonym are words that have similar meaning. Now, big, large, huge, and giant all mean big, but they don't have the same intensity. As I go down from this green part of the thermometer, up to this red fiery part, my words get more intense. They mean more. It's not just something that's big, like a big surprise or a big secret, but a giant surprise or a giant secret. The intensity is higher. Hopefully when we get done watching this little video clip, it's going to make a little bit more sense for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. That's, gonna, that's going to jump us over to YouTube. Here it goes. And I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. We're gonna skip an ad here. Hi, 
Hello everyone and welcome to Learnova. I'm Alex and today we're going to talk about shades of meaning. Words can have related meaning. They mean almost the same thing, but not exactly the same thing. They have little differences between their meanings, which are called shades of meaning. It can be a little bit confusing because you might think they are the same, but they are not. Shades of meaning show different intensity or manner. For example, some words mean a weaker action or feeling, but some other words mean a stronger action or feeling. Some words mean bigger in size, but other words mean smaller in size. Let's compare these words here. The word hop and spring. The word please and thrill. The word peek and stare. And the word big and giant. What's the difference between those words? The words hop and spring are both ways to jump. That's right. If you want to jump, you hop or you spring. But spring is higher. If you want to jump higher, you spring. That's right. The words pleased and thrilled, they both mean happy. That's right. I'm pleased to see you. I'm very thrilled to see you. That's fine. But thrilled is more excited. That's right. Now, here's another one. The words peek or stare are both ways to look. But stare is to look for a longer time. The words big and giant both mean large in size. But giant is much larger. Well, could you help me find out the difference in meaning between the words watch and clock? That's right. Both are tools to tell time. If you look at the watch, you know the time. If you look at the clock, you also know the time. However, a clock is bigger in size. You can wear a watch on your wrist, while a clock can be hung on a wall. I guess you got the idea. Let's check how much you've learned today. Scroll down, take a quiz. Good luck. Of course, you really don't have to scroll down and take a quiz. That's just this video. We're not gonna do that, but we are gonna go back to our lesson. Okay, so now we know a little bit more of shades of meaning. Like that said in the video, it's increasing intensity. They might mean the same thing, but not in the same manner or in the same way. So I'm gonna show you an example. So here is a shades of manner or shades of meaning chart and you're going to be doing you're going to be copying this in your notebook you're going to see that it has the numbers one through ten and it says intensity rank and here's the side for synonyms i'm going to start with an easy example i'm going to use the word big we've all used that word we probably even used it in our writing so his here's the word big i'm going to actually move myself over here now i'm going to put in the comment section down below the link for the the thesaurus but i'm going to show you what it looks like here so it is just www.thesaurus.com but i want to show you an example using the word big so i'm going to go over here to the it's hard to say that word sometimes thesaurus and we're going to link to it and i'm going to type in the word big You'll see that there's a box up here at the top where I put it in, and I'm just going to type in B-I-G. And voila, here comes all of my choices popping up. It's thinking, wow, all of these words mean the same thing as big. Who knew it would be so much? That's right. But notice they're not all the same color, are they? Nope, that's right. That's because there's even changes down here. So where it says most relevant, those are the golden ones. It means these are the words that are closer to big. Now these other words, it depends on the sentence that I'm using them in. Like this word roomy might be used to describe a room. Same thing as spacious. If I walk into a room that's really big, I could say, wow, it's roomy in here, or it's very spacious. So again, those words do count, but the ones that are golden will be more alike the original word. So you can see here, I typed in big, and here are my examples. Well, let's go back over to our presentation, and you're gonna notice I wrote down some of these words. So here's some of the words that I wrote down from the thesaurus. Enormous, gigantic, or giant, hefty, huge, massive, vast, colossal, immense, 
large. They all mean the size of something that is large or big. But big is a boring word. I want something that's more exciting. I want something with more shades of meaning. So what I've done, boys and girls, I have taken this list of words and I have added them to the chart according to their intensity. Watch this. That same list, boom, over here on the shades of meaning list. So we might start with big, but as we go up this list, they get more and more intense. Big, huge, sizable, hefty, gigantic, massive, immense, colossal, vast, enormous. Now, I don't know about you, but I happen to love seafood. Some of my favorites are shrimp and lobster. Now, if I went out to have lobster with my family for a special occasion, do you think I would want a big piece of shrimp or an enormous piece of shrimp? That's right. I would want an enormous shrimp. And I have seen sometimes on menus where they call them colossal shrimp. So you can see how they go up in intensity. Big versus enormous. Again, I don't want just a big shrimp. I want an enormous shrimp. Mmm, making me hungry right now. So let's talk about what our assignment's gonna look like for today, all right? So you have your shades of meaning chart. What you're going to do is you're gonna copy this chart in your notebook. Now you can copy it four times or you can copy it once, but give yourself four columns to write the shades of meaning. You're gonna go back to the thesaurus and you're gonna make a list of shades of meaning for these four words. So you'll go to the thesaurus and you'll type in the word C and you'll decide which words you want to put in your shades of meaning chart and try to increase them in intensity as they go up the list. So these are the words you're gonna use. C, walk, play, and think. And that's your lesson 13 assignment. Now, I'm not saying you have to do this on Wednesday and this on Thursday because I've given you four words. So my thought is that you would do two today and two tomorrow or do them all tomorrow. It really doesn't matter, but when you're done with all four words, take a picture of that chart, that take a picture of the notebook um, that shows the chart for the four words and upload it to your portfolio. So you get a chance today to practice shades of meaning. Go get them. I know you can do it. And I will see you next Monday.